Welcome to the Sphygma Core Excel Pulse Wave Velocity Tutorial. This video will familiarize you with the operation of the Sphygma Core Excel system and how to properly conduct a pulse wave velocity assessment. This tutorial does not cover system setup. If assistance with system setup is needed, please consult your operator's manual. To get started, on your computer desktop, double-click the Sphygma Core Excel icon to launch the application. To establish communication between the software and the Sphygma Core Excel module, click on System in the upper left corner of the toolbar and select Find Module from the drop-down menu. If communication has been successfully established, a message stating Electronics Module Found will be displayed in the notification area at the bottom of the screen. If an error message appears, this indicates that communication could not be established. In this case, ensure that the USB cable is properly connected to both the module and the computer and that the module is powered on. Once confirmed, reattempt the Find Module function. If communication still cannot be established, consult your operator's manual for further troubleshooting suggestions or contact an ACCOR medical representative. It is important when conducting a pulse wave velocity assessment to arrange the room so that the computer screen can be easily viewed by the operator during data capture. In most cases, this is achieved when the computer is placed next to the head of the bed or exam table, the same end where the patient's head will rest. If the screen is in a position that is difficult for the operator to view, it could make data capture challenging. To prepare for pulse wave velocity, the patient should be in the supine position and have rested for at least five minutes before beginning the assessment. Supplied with the Sphygma Core Excel system is a light blue thigh cuff. Only this cuff may be used for conducting pulse wave velocity assessments. For instances where the standard thigh cuff is too small, a second, larger thigh cuff is available. For further information about the larger thigh cuff, please contact your ATCOR Medical Sales representative. Place the thigh cuff on the patient's leg as far up on the thigh as possible. The cuff can be placed over thin clothing, but in some instances it may be necessary for the cuff to be in direct contact with the patient's skin. Ensure that the tubing is on the top of the leg and directed upwards towards the patient's core. Proper cuff application is important for ensuring high quality data capture. Take caution to not use any cuff other than the light blue thigh cuff. Place the cuff upside down. Orient the cuff so that the tubing is anywhere other than the top of the thigh. If the patient has already had a profile created in the Sphygma Core Excel software, locate that profile in the patient list and then proceed with the assessment initiation. To create a new patient profile, click New in the lower left-hand corner of the setup screen and enter the patient information into the appropriate fields. Required fields are noted with an asterisk. As few as a single character can be entered into any field with a maximum of 10 characters for the patient ID and 25 characters for the last and first name fields. Once the information has been entered, click Save to save the patient's profile. To assist in identifying the carotid pulse location, it may be helpful to have the patient extend his neck by lifting his chin and slightly rotate away from the artery that is being palpated. If needed, a rolled up towel may be placed under the patient's neck to provide support. However, it is ideal to remove any pillow from behind the patient's head. Begin by palpating the carotid artery just below the patient's jaw with multiple fingers. Continue to reposition the fingers until a carotid pulse is located. Once located, attempt to pinpoint the exact location of maximal pulsation by transitioning to palpating with a single fingertip. Make a mark on the patient's skin at this point. The Sphygma Core Excel allows for multiple distance measurement methods. In this tutorial, the subtraction method will be demonstrated. Three separate distance measurements are required prior to data capture. 
These include the distance from the suprasternal notch to the mark made over the carotid pulse, the distance from the suprasternal notch to the top of the thigh cuff, and finally, the distance from the femoral pulse to the top of the thigh cuff. All distances should be measured and entered into the software in millimeters. In preparation for distance measurement, first identify the suprasternal notch. It is located in the midline of the body at the top edge of the sternum bone. Now, measure the distance in a straight line from the suprasternal notch to the point of the carotid pulse previously marked. Enter this distance into the carotid to sternal notch field. Next, take a second measurement from the suprasternal notch to the top edge of the thigh cuff. This measurement should be the shortest distance between the two points and not to any specific marker on the thigh cuff. Enter this distance into the sternal notch to cuff field. It is important to not measure along the contour of the patient's body when measuring this distance. Doing so will result in an inaccurately calculated pulse wave velocity. For a more accurate distance measurement, lift the tape measure off the subject's body, keeping it in a straight line parallel to the surface the patient is laying on, and carefully measure in this manner. Finally, measure the distance in a straight line from the palpated location of the patient's femoral pulse to the top of the thigh cuff. The femoral pulse is best felt at an angle approximately 45 degrees inward from the hip bone by the groin or crease of the leg. Enter this distance into the femoral to cuff field. Note that it may be difficult to palpate a patient's femoral pulse through clothing, in which case it may be necessary to palpate directly on the skin. The Sphygma Core Excel software also includes fields for entering the patient's blood pressures, height, and a notes section for free text. However, it is optional to enter this information, and only the distances are required to conduct a pulse wave velocity assessment. Once the desired information has been entered, click Capture to begin the assessment. When capturing waveform data for pulse wave velocity, the software provides two different capture settings. These settings are adjusted prior to beginning the assessments. The PWV settings options can be accessed by clicking System, choosing Settings, and then navigating to the PWV tab. When the Cuff Tonometer Sync option is checked, the thigh cuff will inflate only after 10 seconds of adequate carotid waveforms have been acquired. When the Cuff Tonometer Sync option is not checked, the thigh cuff will begin inflating as soon as capture is initiated. In this tutorial, capture will be demonstrated when the Cuff Tonometer Sync option is not checked. Once the capture button has been pressed, there will be an audible click as the pump turns on and begins inflating the cuff. At the same time, the software will transition to the capture screen. When the pressure in the thigh cuff reaches the desired level, it will discontinue inflating and start acquiring the waveforms in the femoral artery. The tonometer is used to acquire the carotid pressure waveforms by a technique known as applination tonometry. Applination tonometry involves partially flattening the carotid artery between the pressure sensor at the tip of the tonometer and the tissue behind the vessel. Doing so allows the sensor to accurately record the shape of the pulse in the artery, which is critical for accurate pulse wave velocity calculation. While sitting at the side of the exam table, place the tonometer on the patient's carotid pulse, visually connecting the sensor at the tip of the tonometer with the mark made earlier on the patient's neck. The operator's finger should then be positioned at the base of the tonometer in contact with the patient's skin. This provides maximum stability while allowing for the optimal control needed to make the fine, slight adjustments necessary to acquire a high quality signal. It is also important that the operator comfortably rest his arm on the patient's shoulder, chest, or other firm surface to minimize any variation in hold down pressure. When the tonometer sensor is over the pulse, a pressure waveform will appear on the screen. To optimize the signal, make adjustments to the tonometer position and angle. Adjustments should be slight and in a step-by-step -step fashion. Move the tonometer perpendicular to the path of the artery. Movements should be no more than a millimeter at a time while making positional changes. 
be sure to wait a couple of seconds between each adjustment. Do not move the tonometer continuously. It may also be necessary to apply downward pressure in order to achieve successful applanation of the carotid artery. Ensure that there is a clear, well-defined initial upstroke, or foot, on the pressure wave as this is the feature that is utilized in pulse wave velocity calculation. In the capture screen, the top window will display the carotid tracings being acquired with the tonometer, and the bottom window will display the waveforms from the cuff. Each window has a set of guidance bars that provide real-time feedback about the consistency and amplitude of the waveforms. The horizontal bar at the top of the tracing evaluates the consistency of the waveform peaks. The horizontal bar at the bottom of the tracing evaluates the consistency of the baseline. And the vertical column to the right of the capture screen is an indication of the signal amplitude, or strength. When one of the horizontal bars turns green, it is an indication that the consistency of that feature is most likely acceptable. The column to the right of the capture screen has a threshold marker that indicates the preferred minimum amplitude. The Sphygmal Core Excel system requires a minimum of 10 seconds of reproducible waveforms be acquired simultaneously at the carotid and femoral locations. When the signal strength indicator is above the threshold marker and both horizontal guidance bars are green for both capture windows, the software will automatically capture the waveforms and generate a report. However, some circumstances may require the operator to manually capture the assessment. This is accomplished by pressing the space bar on the computer keyboard. Once the assessment is captured, the report will automatically be displayed. It is important to always first evaluate the quality control indicator to determine if the report can be considered acceptable. A green check is an indication of an acceptable assessment, while a red cross indicates that the assessment should be repeated. In addition to the quality control indicator, the waveform should be viewed to ensure they display a well-defined upstroke. Waveforms that are noisy or lack an upstroke definition should be repeated. To repeat an assessment, simply click the Repeat button in the lower right-hand corner of the report screen. Once generated, a report is automatically saved to the patient's profile. Any subsequent reports will also be added under the patient's profile and can be accessed in the Assessments section. All reports are listed chronologically and identified by the date and time of the assessment. If the computer has been configured with a printer, it is possible to print a hard copy of the report by clicking the Print button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Once an acceptable report is obtained, pulse wave velocity is complete and the cuff can be removed.